Horror movies aren't generally known for their happy endings, the clue's kind of in the name really, so much so that this is our second list like this. Make sure you check out our first list, which should be linked below. With that in mind, I'm Sean Ferrick for What Culture Horror, and here are 10 more bleakest endings in horror movies. Number 10, Alien Covenant. A macabre follow-up to 2012's Alien prequel Prometheus, Alien Covenant may not have reached the original entry's lofty heights, but still received a largely positive critical response. The 2017 outing follows the crew of the colony ship Covenant. After landing on an uncharted planet, they soon come face to face with Michael Fassbender's gloriously sinister David. The devious android has spent the time since the events of Prometheus plotting mankind's downfall, engineering the life forms that would go on to become the franchise's iconic xenomorphs. Despite ending his day debut appearance as nothing more than a decapitated head, David comes out on top this time around in exceedingly bleak circumstances. As a result of his identical appearance to the Covenant's resident cyborg Walter, Fassbender's antagonist carries off a wickedly brilliant Trojan horse act after disposing of his doppelganger, a deception that is only revealed after Catherine Waterson's Daniels and Danny McBride's Tennessee seemingly come out on top. Daniels only makes this more devastating realisation after she is placed in stasis, far too late to prevent the murderous android from carrying out his mission. David proceeds to place two facehugger embryos into cold storage with their human counterparts as the Covenant sails silently onwards towards its destination. To paraphrase the movie's oft-quoted words of Percy Shelley, look upon his works ye mighty and despair. Number 9. Rosemary's Baby a mother's unconditional love for her child is a beautiful thing, unless it happens to be within the context of 1968's Rosemary's Baby. Roman Polanski's seminal horror offering sees Mia Farrow's Rosemary Woodhouse move into a building in Manhattan with her husband Guy. Things soon take a dark turn when Rosemary becomes pregnant after hallucinating that she has been raped by Satan. She soon begins to suspect that her elderly neighbours, the Castavets, plan to use her unborn child in satanic rituals. The movie's conclusion sees Rosemary's worst fears realised. After losing consciousness when she goes into labour, Farrow's protagonist is informed that her baby was stillborn only to discover the true extent of her nightmarish predicament when she is alerted to the child's survival after hearing an infant's crying. After entering her neighbour's flat through a hidden door, Rosemary is confronted with the sight of her own husband, the Castavets, and various other cult members gathered around a black bassinet adorned with an inverted crucifix. A brief glance inside is enough to make her recoil in horror, demanding to know what is wrong with her child's eyes. Eyes. Rather unsurprisingly, considering that the baby is the Antichrist, Rosemary is cheerfully informed that the boy has his father's eyes. However, it's still not enough to deter her. After hearing the child's wails once again, Rosemary reluctantly begins to rock the cradle to comfort her satanic son. Yikes. Number 8. Would You Rather? Appropriately for a film that verges on what is essentially torture porn, psychological horror Would You Rather possesses one of the bleakest endings imaginable. David Guy Levy's picture chronicles a twisted take on the classic party game. At the behest of an affluent and thoroughly depraved philanthropist, various unfortunate candidates find themselves having to partake in life-threatening contests in the hope of winning a lucrative reward. In the case of Brittany Snow's Iris, the prize has exceedingly personal stakes. Her brother Rally suffers from leukemia and they are unable to afford the expensive treatment required. Iris accordingly agrees to participate in the game after the aforementioned philanthropist Shepard Lambrick offers to pay for Raleigh's medical treatment and use his considerable sway to find a suitable bone marrow donor. After a relentless array of physical and psychological torture, Iris ultimately comes out on top after she dispatches the final remaining contestant to win the game. Lambrick informs her that a donor has been found for her brother and gives her enough cash to cover his treatment and much more. On the surface, it looks like her harrowing ordeal has ultimately been worth the suffering. Of course, that's only until Iris returns home. She soon makes the desolating discovery that Raleigh has died by suicide to free his sister from the burden of caring for him, rendering her abhorrent trials utterly meaningless. Number 7. Kill List in addition to the debut of one of psychological horror's hidden gems, 2011 witnessed one of the most soul-destroying conclusions to a movie that a person could fathom. A gloriously unsettling slow burn of the highest order, Kill List follows a British soldier who takes up work as a hitman after returning home from overseas. On paper, the film's premise sounds more like an action thriller, serving only to compound the levels of shock when it morphs into full-on nightmare territory. The aforementioned soldier, Neil Maskell's shell-shocked Jay, is tasked with a series of assassinations, 
eventually revealed to be the plottings of a shadowy cult. After a harrowing pair of murders, he and his partner decide that they want no further part in this twisted scheme, but the faceless organization coerces them into completing the mission by threatening to kill their families. Kill List's climactic sequence sees Jay captured by the cult and tasked with one final murder, a masked and cloaked figure with whom he engages in a brutal knife fight. The veteran Judy triumphs by brutally stabbing his mysterious foe to death, only to make the soul-cleaving discovery that his adversary was actually his wife Shell with their young son Sam strapped to her back. Utterly gut-wrenching stuff. Number 6. The Collector Marcus Dunstan's The Collector constitutes yet another case of you picked the wrong house for the horror genre. The 2009 horror chronicles the plight of Arkin O'Brien, an ex-convict Josh Stewart's character attempts to rob a house to pay off a debt, only to discover that a considerably more nightmarish intruder has already gotten there first. As opposed to burglary, the eponymous villain collects one human being from every house that he visits, brutally murdering any remaining occupants. The Collector traps his prey in the property with him, preventing any escape through a delightful array of booby traps including window frames lined with razor blades and spikes hidden in telephones for anyone foolish enough to call 911. Appropriately for such a morbid central premise, the movie ends in a thoroughly depressing manner. After Arkin seemingly escapes his psychotic pursuer, he is accidentally hit by an approaching police car and placed in an ambulance to be transported to a hospital. All's well that ends well, right? Incorrect. The collector ambushes Arkin's ambulance, ramming the vehicle off the road and savagely murdering everyone on board except for his Quarry. Stewart's thrashing protagonist is dragged out and stuffed into one of his pursuer's signature trunks as he screams in despair. It gets even worse from there, with a post credit scene depicting the victorious collector watching film slides at Topps O'Brien's container. Number 5. Smile it's supremely ironic that the conclusion to a film entitled Smile is enough to make one weep despondently. This 2022 horror depicts the tribulations of Dr. Rose Cotter. A therapist on a psychiatric ward, Rose is tormented by a supernatural entity after she witnesses one of her patients die by suicide. Said patient believed that she was being pursued by an invisible being that took the form of a smiling people or persons, constituting more than an eerie coincidence when she slits her own throat while grinning like the Cheshire Cat. The entity is revealed to be the result of a curse, passed on from one individual to another when they witness an identical suicide. Unfortunately for Sosie Bacon's protagonist, that means she's next. Smile concludes in abjectly harrowing fashion after 115 minutes of psychological torment. Rose is led to believe that she has evaded her paranormal pursuer, only to realise that she has hallucinated her entire escape. The Doctor comes face to face with the nightmarish entity, a hideous monstrosity that possesses Cotter by forcing her jaw open and literally clambering inside her. The cherry on the cake comes as Rose's old boyfriend Joel arrives just in time to witness his old flame smiling like a person who fell asleep with a coat hanger in their mouth. The beaming doctor immolates herself before his very eyes, passing the curse on to Joel to conclude 2022's most disturbing psychological horror offering. Number 4. The Wicker Man Described by some critics as the Citizen Kane of horror movies, Robin Hardy's The Wicker Man is the finest folk horror offering of all time. This 1973 outing follows Edward Woodward's Neil Howie, a policeman who journeys to a remote Scottish island in search of a missing young girl. The sergeant soon discovers that the inhabitants have embraced paganism, led by Christopher Lee's sinister Lord Summerisle. Despite The Wicker Man's enviable accolades, this decidedly isn't the film for anybody looking for a happy ending. The picture's conclusion exposes Howie's mission as a farcical ruse. The policeman was actually lured to the island as a human sacrifice in the hopes of securing another bountiful harvest. Despite Neil's desperate pleas for his captors to see reason, he finds himself stuffed into the film's titular subject, an enormous wicker contraption in the shape of a man. The islanders merrily sing and dance as they set the structure ablaze, with the strains of summer is a coming in, punctuated only by Howie's anguished prayers and curses. There is to be no rescue for the unfortunate sergeant, with his words drowned out by his tormentors chanting, how he burns to death in torturous fashion as the eponymous effigy collapses in flames. Number 3. The Descent it speaks volumes that the revelation that people actually go caving for fun isn't the bleakest thing about 2005's The Descent. That unenviable honour is undoubtedly reserved for the subterranean horror's conclusion. The Descent chronicles a caving expedition gone horrifically wrong. Six friends find themselves trapped in a cave system miles below the surface where they are subsequently hunted by an array of nightmarish humanoid creatures. The Descent's original ending is so soul-destroying that the US version of the film actually depicts an alternate conclusion over concern 
concerns that the prototypical take was too depressing. This rendition sees lead protagonist Sarah escape her hellish surroundings, with no more than a creepy hallucination of her old friend Juno to close the show. Yawn. The extended ending screened in the United Kingdom is considerably more horrifying to say the least. As opposed to concluding on the apparition of Juno, the illusion morphs to reveal that Sarah is still trapped in the cave system, having completely fabricated the escape in her own mind. However, director Neil Marshall isn't quite done sucking the life out of anybody watching. Sarah continues to hallucinate, imagining her deceased daughter sitting across from her, holding a birthday cake with her face illuminated by the light of the candles. In actuality, the glow is emanating from her flickering torch, slowly dying out as the monstrous creatures close in around her. Number 2. Speak No Evil as disturbingly sadistic as it is deliciously satirical, Danish production Speak No Evil was one of 2022's more unexpected success stories, to the point that a remake of the film starring James McAvoy is currently in production. With all that being said, the ending to Christian Taftrup's picture is legitimately traumatising enough to send a person to therapy. The film centres on Bjorn, Louise and their young daughter Agnes. After becoming acquainted on vacation in Italy, the trio are invited to spend a holiday with a couple and their young son at their remote Dutch farmhouse. Unfortunately, their new friends soon demonstrate behaviour that would make Hannibal Lecter resemble a dream roommate. Speak No Evil's finale reveals that the couple, Patrick and Corrine, are actually a pair of depraved serial killers, utilising a modus operandi of abducting children after murdering their parents. After he discovers the couple's supposedly mute son Abel's corpse, Bjorn's desperate attempts to get his family to safety are foiled when their car breaks down. The killers catch up with them and Corrine proceeds to cut out Agnes's tongue before her parents are forced into a ditch to be stoned to death. It somehow gets even worse from there. The murderous duo are seen soon after as they target a new family, with a now mute Agnes being forced to masquerade as their latest child. Number 1. Sinister Anybody looking to spend an evening rocking to and fro in abject despair could do far worse than Scott Derrickson's Sinister, acclaimed by many as one of the most terrifying horror films of all time. The 2012 outing follows Ethan Hawke's Ellison Oswald, a once successful true crime writer on his down on his look. Intending to write a biography on an unsolved murder case, Oswald moves his family into the property where the killings took place in the hope of gaining inspiration. Unfortunately, Hawke's protagonist gets more than he bargained for after discovering a box of snow films. The Super 8 tapes depict an array of blood-chilling murders perpetrated against entire families in Oswald's new home. This development duly unveils the involvement of Bagul, an ancient demonic entity that murdered entire families with the exception of one child, which the terrifying being would then claim for itself. Further research reveals, for each murder that took place, a child disappeared from the family in question. Sinister's desolating ending reveals that the murders were actually the work of the missing children under under the demon's influence, a realisation that Oswald makes far too late when he imbibes coffee drugged by his own young daughter Ashley. In Bagul's thrall, Ashley butchers her hapless family with an axe and paints the walls with their blood before being claimed by the entity in one of horror's most ghoulishly macabre conclusions. And on that happy note, that brings us to the end of this list. Thank you very much to the original writer, Gabriel Sheehan. You can check out his article over on whatculture.com. Make sure that you're following us on Twitter at whatculturehorror, and you can follow myself at Sean Ferrick on Twitter, Instagram, and the various socials as well. Until I see you again, make sure that you look after yourself, make sure that you're being kind to yourself and others, and if you can do anything to help it, try not to end up on one of these lists, eh? You're wonderful. Thanks very much.